Okay, so we're going to be talking about the idea of uh, polar coordinates here and using them in our clock application. And uh, polar coordinates is something that you should have been introduced to in trigonometry. And you know what? If uh, way back when, or maybe right now, if you're taking trig right now, you said, I'm never going to use this stuff. Why do they make me learn it? Hey, guess what? We're going to use it. So if you're going to be a programmer, you want to develop software, you need all the math you can get because you never know when it's going to come in handy. In any case, what we're going to do with polar coordinates is use this unit circle, and this is how the unit circle works in processing. Basically, it just describes the angular distance around the circumference of a circle, okay, in radians. So all the way around, one trip around, 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. 90 degrees is pi over 2 radians. 180 degrees is pi radians, and so on. Okay? And so in processing, 0 is right here, and we go clockwise as the angle increases. Okay? So in polar coordinates, here's what we do. First of all, we have this concept of the pole. Each point is specified by the distance and angle relative to a fixed point, which is the pole. Okay, And for our purposes, we're going to imagine that the pole is the center of the clock. And then from there, we have the idea of a ray. A ray reaches out from the pole to the point we're trying to specify. So if you imagine that this point right at the end of the arrow is the point we're trying to get the coordinates for, our ray begins at the pole and extends outward to that point. Okay. Now the length of that ray, r, is called the radius of that ray. Okay. So we need to know the radius, how long this ray is in order to determine the point. The other thing we need to know is the angle from zero going clockwise to the radian, okay, or to the ray rather, is called theta, and that's the polar angle of this coordinate, okay? So now those two things that we've got, we've got the angle theta and the length, the radius r those completely specify where a point is. The distance this way, rotationally, and the length from the pole is all we need to know in order to determine a point. And if you think about it, that becomes very handy for a clock. Okay, So we can use an angle and a length for each of the clock's hands. The only thing that we need to do is do a little bit of a rotation so that our zero is actually rotated pi over 2 to the left so that 0 starts at the top, the 12 o'clock position. And that'll just make our math easier later on when we try to determine you know, where the hands would be for 1 o'clock or 5.30 or 47 seconds or whatever. Okay? Now, ultimately, we have to do one more thing. Okay? We need to get back to coordinate uh, to Cartesian coordinates in order to draw our lines. Because polar coordinates don't do us any good, we need the actual xy coordinates at this point. Well, luckily, there are some trig identities for that. Hey, I hope you pay attention in trig. We can determine the x coordinate by taking the uh, length r times the cosine of theta and the y coordinate by taking r times the sine of theta. So if we do those two things, we'll have our coordinates. Okay, there actually is one more little thing that we need to take care of. That is we need to do a translation in addition to the rotation. So previously we mentioned that we need to rotate to the left by pi over 2 radians in order to put our zero radian line at the top, the 12 o'clock position. But if you recall, our center or our origin for our coordinate system in processing is the upper left corner of the window. So what we need to do is translate those converted coordinates, that is the coordinates from polar to Cartesian, from that origin in the upper left to the center of the screen. And in order to do that, that's real simple. 
we're going to add one half of the display window width to each coordinate before we actually draw the lines. And that will move them from that upper left corner down to uh, like a polar coordinate or centered around the center of the uh, display window. Now somebody out there is probably saying right about this time, hey, you just did all the math that you said you didn't want to do anyway. And yeah, I get it. We just did the math for that icky Cartesian coordinate system stuff that we talked about uh, a while ago. But somehow talking about or thinking about the hands in terms of polar coordinates seems simpler to me. And you know what? It's my video. So, okay. So those are the pieces that we're going to need. Now let's start to think about the different uh, constants and methods and things like that. We're going to go ahead and plan for how to write the application.